and welcome to Krakow Calling. Um, broadcasting live from ABB in the heart of Krakow. Um, that is the ABB GBS global hub in the heart of Krakow. So today, what makes Poland a go-to location for tech talent? Um, is it the right choice? Will it continue to be the right choice? How will our world be disrupted post-COVID? So I'm Andrew Hallam, for those that don't know me, General Secretary of Aspire, Poland's transformative network of tech and business services companies and people. Our motto is act local, local win global, uh, and that is in part what we are going to be doing today. So the first thing to notice, of course, is that this is not a webinar, those that you, of you who signed up for the webinar, as we have come to know it over the last 18 months. We decided it was time to start preparing for the future hybrid world, neither digital nor in person, uh, but both. Not just headshots, but living, breathing bodies and headshots. Hopefully the best of both worlds. So joining me live in person, a panel of site leaders drawn from the Aspire Network, a panel of leaders drawn from the Aspire Network, um, introductions later, and an invited audience of peers ready to share their thoughts. Join us online, Amita Goyal, head of the global COE practice at Zinoff, um, the global management consultancy firm who are one of our po partners in hosting uh, today's event. <coughs> and not least yourselves, an audience gathered from across the world, from Poland, from India, from the US, and from elsewhere. Okay, first things first, a little housekeeping. Uh, or since we are broadcasting on YouTube, if you could do this, a bit of promotion. That is to say, um, could you hit the like, share, or the subscribe buttons to show your appreciation, uh, to enable others to join the session, and to get notifications of future sessions? Okay? So, like, share, subscribe. Do that now, please. Okay. And the session is being recorded um, and will be uploaded on YouTube. Okay? Um, so, we'll all become influencers. So, now let's get down to it. Um, first, a little bit of context, so from myself. Um, most of you will know this, of course, but some may not, okay? So, this is more for our international audience. Since Poland joined the European Union in 2004, and for some forward-thinking companies as early as 1999, 89, when the Berlin Wall fell, um, corporations have been looking at Poland and its strong university cities, which pretty much means all the major cities, in particular, to locate services delivery and IT development centers. To the point today where, in Krakow alone, we have 110,000 people working in tech and business services across 350 or more companies. And Poland itself is an acknowledged power in the industry globally. Now, Aspire has been at the forefront of that. And one thing we've done in particular over the last 10 to 15 years is open our doors and provide the inside track to those taking a look on what it's like to operate in Krakow. Peer-to-peer, grown-up conversations which is the hallmark, so I think we have proved, of a successful and robust ecosystem. So that's our purpose today, in a certain sense, to replicate uh, the experience of a site visit. Um, many of you in the audience here will have participated in those. Um, a site visit, whether you're a potential investor, um, someone looking at working in Poland, um, or someone already here. We can all share and we can all learn. 
So, let's get started. Um, those looking, of course, are, are very often being guided by uh, a consultant um, who will have signposted Poland uh, and Krakow as a place to consider. So, at this point, I would like to introduce uh, Amita Goyal. Amita is Global Centres of Excellence Practice Partner at Zinoff, and Amita is going to be joining us um, from India. Hi, Amita. Hello, how are, how are you? you? Doing great, how are you? Yeah, no, good, good, good. Excited about this. Okay. Um, so, Amita, look, you advise companies on, on their globalization strategies on a daily basis, day to day, yeah? And, right. um, yeah. and this session came about because we had a conversation uh, about Poland being very high on your radar. Yeah? Absolutely. So, so, so my question to you is, um, I mean, I know you've prepared some data for us that you're, you very kindly agreed to share, and I think that's fantastic. Um, but can you tell me in a sentence or two, you know, what's, what, what in your opinion is driving this interest in Poland? Um, and, and generally, what's driving interest in, in globalization at this point? Absolutely. Um, I think my presentation will talk in detail about that. But I think the biggest driver is a global talent crunch um, and the need to innovate faster. I think I would sum up in those two sentences um, why globalization is becoming more and more important by the day. Okay, okay, Amita. Look, we're, we're on a pretty tight schedule, so I think the next thing we'll do is we'll do a quick fire intro to our panel, um, starting from, uh, well, my right. Um, and so, just, just to know, guys, you are on screen. It says who you are, it says your name, it says your title, it says your company. So what I'm going to ask is, Przemek, what is it you do? Przemek Roth, uh, Dyson Business Services. We are a pretty new uh, center on this market. Uh, started in April this year and so far successfully proving to the company that Krakow was the right choice. So when did you make the decision to, to, to locate in Krakow? It was the end of the last year, really. So during COVID? Yes, during COVID. During COVID, okay. But uh, Krakow is not new to you, right? I mean, you... No, no, actually, you know, I'm since 2017 in Krakow, and uh, I'm actually linked to business services industry since 2011. Okay, okay, my friend. We'll, we'll leave it there, because uh, we're coming back. Uh, okay, so um, um, everybody in Poland is called Przemek, so we're going to go to Przemek Zakrzewski. Good afternoon. Yeah, this is... My name is Przemek, so I'm heading a uh, corporate technology center in, in IBB, which is you know, research and development of technology and new products uh, for, for our company. We've been here 25 years as a research in IBB. So it's 25 years? So yeah, it's sorry, my, my we started, so good. When was that? that was we started in 1997 when we decided to build a research center here in, in Krakow, the place to be. So early investment in the city. Okay. But you're not from Krakow, right? No, I'm not. No, I'm a homeless person. I'm, yeah. engi I'm, engin <laughs> I'm engineer, so meaning that you know, ABB gives me opportunity to travel a lot and uh, work with many people, so I consider myself as a homeless. Okay, and how, how many does the, in IT, uh, uh, is, is the head count for ABB in Krakow? In IT, I mean, it, it has to be like over the 600 or close to 600 people working for different type of IT activities software development, but when, you, when we speak about pure research, it's also about 300 people, engineers, scientists, and researchers sitting here in Krakow. Okay, great. Okay. I didn't ask you about ABB in general, because we're, now we're going to come to Pavel. Yeah. <laughs> right? Okay. Not Przemek. So, Pavel, you, 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 you tell me, because we, we know who you are, so Pavel Fabrychewski. Uh, ABB GBS. So exactly. tell us a little bit about the GBS. Yes. Uh, uh, we established our center more than five years ago, and currently we are um, having more than 2,200 talents working for us uh, in different areas, starting from uh, uh, typical um, GBS areas of responsibilities like uh, finance, procurement, logistics, uh, supply chain, uh, travel management services, uh, um, HR-related services, um, 
IS, which means IT is also part of our um, service portfolio. And as Przemek said, you know, we have uh, uh, more than 600 people working for us also on these uh, different uh, technologies. And you know, I'm very proud to be part of this uh, and you've, beautiful sorry, team. Sorry, but you've done you've, uh, also mm -hmm. during COVID, right? I mean, you've, you've done something quite spectacular, haven't you? You've divested. Yes, yes. Actually, that's uh, very interesting. You know, um, uh, we are here um, uh, during this pandemic for the last one and a half year already. And uh, um, one year ago, uh, we finalized uh, uh, the biggest, I believe, divestment, uh, first of all, the history of ABB, and one of the biggest, I believe, in the history of uh, Europe. And uh, uh, our power grids uh, division is currently part of uh, Hitachi ABB joint venture. Uh, yeah, and uh, that, that's with, the With big, in big implications for, for, for the GBS, right? Uh, it is. It is, but uh, you know we have uh, also our colleagues working from for for Hitachi uh, power grids also here in Krakow, and I'm very happy to see that the, the this center is also growing. The, w the word you're looking for is seamless. It was seamless, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, Swavek, I'm moving to my left. Uh, Swavek Kumka. It says on the screen, IBM Swavek. Tell us a little bit about the IBM Software Lab. So IBM Software Lab was established in 2005. Uh, and interesting story about setting up this location by IBM is that uh, unlikely to any other areas, uh, Software Lab in Krakow was built from the scratch, literally from the five people who, who started building the organization here. And from projects we were part of as a kind of uh, uh, third party uh, teams uh, working on the, on the bigger products, we went through those 16 years into the moment where actually many of those projects from very interesting areas like artificial intelligence or machine learning are led out of Krakow. So okay. pretty successful story uh, proven by the quality of uh, engineers here in Krakow. Okay, okay. and you also have uh, the BTO in Krakow, right? Yeah, there's also other part of uh, IBM who is more, more, more most likely financial services. Okay, and then IBM is across Central Europe, right? I mean, you yeah. know, I, don't know. I mean, what kind of places you're in? Just kind of mention some places, please. Well, <laughs> worth to mention Warsaw as a headquarters, Krakow as a second location. Probably one month ago, I would say also Wrocław and Katowice, but most of you probably know but that IBM has split into the two separate companies. So the locations in Katowice and in, in Warsaw became Kindrill which is purely related to, to the uh, IT services organization, uh -huh, not, okay. not, not, not like uh, software development and research. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, to, to Jan and to Silvia. So first to Jan. Uh, so maybe I start with uh, my company Pega, because maybe not everybody knows what well, we do. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, so we, we're, we're a global company delivering uh, software and services for uh, for customer engagement, uh, customer service, or intelligent automation. And uh, we're based. Uh, the headquarters are in the U.S. and um, and in, in Krakow we have uh, around 400 people in the R&D center. Uh, the history of Krakow. Starts and, and my engagement uh, with with um, with this branch starts 15 years ago. Uh, like similarly as with Swavik. So you were Pega 15. So we, we haven't. Yeah, yeah, we haven't been Pega. Was it was a different different company, Volantis Systems, much smaller, uh, much smaller company. Opened the branch. We were eventually acquired by Pega at some okay. point. Uh, let me count. Eight years ago. Um, so um, so we started literally from scratch, being completely unknown company. But now we have we have. Okay. 400 people, R&D, uh, some other parts as well. Thank you. And Sylvia, I've known you a long time, so, so not only with Pega, but... Uh... Yeah, yeah. Over 20 years on the market, a uh, human person, so people make a difference. I'm connecting the dots here of different businesses working before in, in finance, HR as business leader, uh, and IT software development, so different kind of businesses. And I'm ready to be here because I believe that Krakow, what is really unique about is about talent, stable talent with a high end of capabilities. So this is what really makes a difference in Krakow in my eyes. Thank you. All right. So that's our panel. Um, plus Amita. Um, and so we're going to go to Amita now because Amika, Amita has uh, um, prepared some data, um, not just about Poland, um, 
basically, I think in, in terms of um, how you're kind of talking to, to your customers about, about globalization, right? So maybe at this point, Amita, I'm going to hand over to you. You have... I know it says 10 minutes. It's slightly less than 10 minutes. Can I say that? Okay. So, Amita, off you go. Thank you, Andrew. And um, thanks for a wonderful start uh, to the event. It's really lovely to see a hybrid event for a change and meet people in person. <laughs> so thank you for this event. Um, I think before we start, I want to set the context. Um, in the last two years, there have been so many drastic changes across digitalization, um, the way we work, et cetera, which is compelling companies to think of hubs outside of their headquarters. And therefore, we actually started looking at these trends in um, more detail. We looked at three trends specifically. One is digital engineering spend, digitalization was accelerating as never before at least by one to three years. There is a huge talent crunch happening across the world, especially in countries like US, Japan, Italy, et cetera, and it's only going to increase over years. And the third thing is COVID truly has become the chief digital officer of the world and has proven that effectiveness of distributed teams exists and we can grow even in this model. Keeping in mind these three things, we believe that enterprises and companies need to think of a multi-hub approach. To look, to look at it in more detail, um, our research so, shows that if you look at the er and spend, the digital spend is increasing at a much faster rate than the legacy engineering and R&D spend. So much and so that by 2023, the digital spend would be more than 45% of the overall R&D spend while the manufacturing-led verticals saw a bit of a hit during COVID time, digital spend continued to grow. Keeping in mind along with that, that innovation and new technologies are emerging at a faster pace more than ever before again. Things which look at some of the sectors here, we are looking at BFSI and retail in this slide. Uh, if you look at BFSI sector, yes, we need to manage the important things which still exists, such as asset management, wealth management, et cetera. But if you look at the pace of technology development, things such as technologies for anti-money laundering, cashless payment, they were new a few years ago. They're already old. Now, this industry is talking about robo-advisors. They're talking about blockchain for financial transactions. What are we seeing across retail, BFSI, healthcare? every industry is digitalizing at a faster pace. What is that leading to? That's leading to converging, converging skills. And amongst the core skills that are required across all these industries, you see a lot of these skills are actually digital skills. Data science, cybersecurity, big data engineering, API development, et cetera. What we see, the other thing is our data shows that there is a shortage, if you look at demand and supply, there is a shortage of talent by 4.4 million. That is going to accelerate and be 8 million by 2026. With this kind of a global talent skill gap, especially in the countries which are already suffering, we perhaps need to look at other top hotspots for talent across the world. Well, I just said that. Uh, COVID forced us all to work from home, but it taught us a lot of things during the process. Many companies have actually permanently announced work from home. Some others are working on a hybrid model, such as Microsoft, et cetera. And few others have announced extended work from home because we have technologies, we have used collaborative tools like Microsoft Teams, Zoom, like never before. We know the share prices of these tools and these companies have skyrocketed in the last year. And things like cloud infrastructure and emergence of new regulations is just helping new hybrid models every day. Very interestingly, some companies actually leverage a distributed model outside of their headquarter effectively even before COVID. You see two examples here. Intuit, um, for instance, the company on the right, it's an American company. 
they have hubs outside of their uh, home country and headquarter country, which is US. In fact, they have a hub in, in Bangalore in India uh, from where I'm speaking. Very interestingly, more than 40% of product, which and 40% of the uh, revenue of the company, which is related to the products developed in the Bangalore center is being such an effective value proposition of the globalization and the multi-hub approach which companies like Intuit took and Adobe took. What's very interesting about these hubs and these satellites is that they have talent across the diversity. They have software engineers, architects, senior leaders, VP of engineering, et cetera, which allows them to have teams which can actually own drive uh, product development or IT development. What brings me to the hypothesis that companies need to think about a global hotspot strategy, which can allow them to build and scale at optimal cost while driving product ownership and innovation. What do we do next? We looked at 13 most popular countries, which our customers repeatedly asked us questions on. These countries um, uh, were across the globe from Latin America, from Central Europe, from Asia Pacific and North American region. Oh, what, what you see on the slide, uh, the red color indicates high cost. And as we become from orange to amber to green, the cost reduces. As you can see, Central Europe has talent and is more affordable than many of the other Western countries. Let's dive a little more deeper into Central Europe. What started emerging as an insight to us that countries like Poland, Bulgaria, Romania, et cetera, have huge talent base for software development. We started looking more deep and we, we got even more interested seeing not just talent, they have hundreds of global companies to be precise, com company, uh, countries like Poland led the way. They had more than 800 global companies with multiple cities, interesting cities like Warsaw, Krakow, Katowice, uh, the Tri-City, et cetera, and a booming startup ecosystem with some other countries like Lithuania, Romania, Bulgaria. We started looking at costs. We, we, um, you know, we looked at the talent pyramid, which you see on your screen for a hundred member team. And most of the countries had a huge cost benefit as compared to um, setting up teams in countries like US. Uh, to be precise, at least a 50% benefit was very clear if you see just the compensation of people. We started looking at scalability. Well, if you start making a team of 100, you perhaps need people in thousands. So we started looking at um, how, how can you scale teams here? What green means here is there is ample availability of talent. Orange is not so good. Uh, if you see the various Central European countries, again, Poland was at the forefront. And you can see a lot of green there, which means having full product teams, full software teams, full IT teams is highly feasible if you're building teams of size of 100, et cetera. We looked at the startup ecosystem. Well, interestingly, again, uh, Poland had very vibrant uh, startup ecosystem with some other countries like Lithuania and unicorns, uh, unicorns such as Doc Planner, uh, emerging unicorns like Booksy, varying from uh, medical healthcare system doc documentation planning to e-commerce for shoes, such a huge variety and such a booming ecosystem. We started ranking all the countries uh, from the point of view of talent availability and scalability, cost, from the point of view of ease of doing business, and the maturity of the ecosystem, which means how strong is their academia, startups, uh, partners, and other peer companies. Very interestingly, again, Poland was amongst the top five hotspots that came into light. Um, that got us more excited, and we started looking more deeper into Poland. And like I said, there are multiple cities in Poland with vibrant talent ecosystem, but Warsaw and Krakow came in our study studies as the top two cities. We started looking at their maturity, but I'm not going to dive deep into the maturity of these cities because we have some very experienced leaders from Poland who are going to talk to us about what makes them successful there. So thank you so much and back to the studio.
Hey, thank you. Thank you very much, Anita. Okay, so look, um, if I'm going to summarize, I mean, in terms of the, the questions or the discussion we're going to have now, I think, um, just confirm this with me, right? So talent, clearly, yeah, setting up, um, scaling up, cost, availability, etc. You clearly would like to hear from um, our panel about, about that. Um, the ease of doing business. Yeah, I suppose we're talking about such things as infrastructure, um, the stable economy, um, as it may be perceived um, from where you are, um, the political and the legal environment. Uh, we want to look at both GBS and IT. Absolutely. Yeah, and what you call the innovation ecosystem, um, what some others I think would call uh, sustainability, maybe. Right? So, okay. Um, and then we're going to look at the potential um, impact of COVID on that whole scenario. So, so now if I'm going to come to, to the panel, um, but you're going to stay with us, Amita, right? So you're, you're becoming part of the panel, I think, right? Okay. I can't remember whether I was supposed to sit down yet or not, so I'm going to sit down at this point, if that's okay. Okay, so we have the rest of the time for discussion, and we have 50 minutes, okay? So let me just have a look and see... Um, Okay, okay, so we'll start with talent, um, and let's start with IT talent, I think, okay? So, um, actually, Swavek, I'm going to come to to you. Um, I know it's difficult to talk about it without taking IT, uh, COVID into account, so try and push COVID to, okay. to the side for, for now, if you can, right? Um, from the point of view of a company setting up, I mean, what do they need to know? What should they know about... Poland. Is it Poland? Is it, is it particular cities in Poland? What, should, what, what, what do they need to know? So, in my opinion, first of all, some basic information about Poland, about our system and stability. Second, definitely look at the particular... Are we, are we stable? I'm f I think so we're stable. Comparing to many other countries, in my opinion, Poland is pretty stable. Comparing to what other uh, other countries globally or in Central Europe? I mean, uh, let let me say in about the Europe. I believe uh, more stable than, for example, Romania or Bulgaria. Okay, so other Central European countries. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, uh, one thing. Second, uh, actually, I believe it would be worth to uh, spend some time in particular locations where the business could be could be opened. Talking to the local business association like Aspire, for example, also talking to the universities and uh, get more information about the experience company who exists already have on the market. Okay, okay. So, um, uh, IBM's here, been here for years, right? IBM's a huge brand, right? So, sure. so if you're a company without a huge brand, can you set up in Krakow? I think yes. Uh, I believe right now, of course, the, the big brands are kind of uh, uh, companies who are recognized because of the name, but I believe that what matters right now, and many young people, especially in IT business, look more towards the solution and technologies about the project itself rather than the, the logos. I would say that over the last five years in Krakow, uh, some companies, big companies, has actually suffered from the attrition related to the fact that people with experience actually move to the startups, mm -hmm. which is uh, really very, very growing area in in, in Krakow. Sure, moment. it is. No, no, for sure. Right. Okay. I mean, mm -hmm. thank you. I mean, well, maybe maybe move to you, Jan. <laughs> yes, right? I mean, certainly my, the, the example of the. Unknown company starting in Krakow is closer <laughs> to my heart. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. So maybe, not, maybe not Pega yeah. Systems, the, the company that, that, uh, that uh, the, 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 first, the first few months, actually, we hired literally five people. Uh, I, I, I started um, a few months later, and, uh, and we really invested in, in making sure the, the local IT community knows what we are, what we plan to do, uh, and... Uh, the company um, uh, was um, was very fresh, let's say, maybe not a startup, but uh, but not uh, not very well known. Uh, so we, we did invest in it, and and we found people not only who had skills, but also those who kind of believed in our product. And and I think this is this is like an important, let's say, advice. 
Uh, okay, so now I'm going to give you a tough question now, right? So, well, maybe it's not tough. I you said you it's want. tough or not? I don't. Oh, said you um, want. So, so um, because there is competition in the market. So, how how long do you expect people to stay with poker? So we started 15 years ago. Uh, uh, in in uh, in the first uh, year, I think we went. It, as I said, it was Volantis, different different brand. Um, we ended up having around 60 people. Uh, I have 30 of them still now, after 15 years. So, uh, as I say, it, it was the investment, and also um, you can you can hire you know a bunch of software very senior, very experienced engineers, and you know start the operations the next day. But also you can hire younger talent or, or the good mix, and then then you allow people to grow. Uh, okay, and, and, there, and, and there's definitely longer. momentum, right? I mean, there's a momentum behind IT. I mean, I don't know, 15 years ago. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That, that yeah. was a different situation, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, but I think some of these things are very much um, relevant now as well. You know, if, I, if I was to set up the startup, I would do the same. I would let people know what, I, uh -huh. <laughs> what I'm planning uh -huh. to do. And <laughs> find a few, um, probably not, not, not be... Um, uh, not be as aspirational to to have two hundred people on the mm -hmm. first week. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, do, 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 actually, I'll leave, I'll leave that, that the next question that I was going to ask. I'll, I'll leave it for now. Um, show me I, what what year did ABB arrive here? Twenty five. Twenty five. Twenty five. You're talking about. You've been here twenty five. I mean, me personally. No, no, no. no. Okay, me I, personally. ABB. Like, I forgot. It's like. Almost 17, 18 years I've been here in this company. Okay, okay. And, and so just in terms of um, ABB's position on the market, I mean, I'm assuming that over that, because I'm kind of focusing on branding here. Okay. So the ABB brand, was it always a known brand or is that something you've developed as a local brand? Definitely, it was not very well known brand, but being here like almost as a company, 30 years, and starting as a manufacturing uh, location with many basic uh, blue collar operations, that was kind of investment on our side. How to how to a little bit distinguish the mm -hmm. ABB, which is focusing on delivering value to customer out of the, our productions activities, and ABB as a research IT center delivering a little bit more product development and from very 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 beginning we decided to to make this place as a environment when people can attach to product very specific product with very specific purpose for their personal and global challenges and that's why i believe we keep we've been we've been saying about sustainability for years why we are doing a little bit hardware, software, and different type of mixture of solutions to deliver value to, to the world. So it's not only about me, myself, my personal challenges, but also a little bit feeling that I can contribute a little bit to the world with my personal knowledge, uh, ambition, uh, etc. So effort I put into the system. So that's, I believe, uh, if I would uh, need to give one suggestion is uh, let's set up the environment to feel people how they contribute to my own challenges and the global challenges yeah, and how yeah, to collaborate yeah, each yeah, other. Yeah. I, I think it's just an important point to, to mention because a lot of companies kind of, they assume that the players in this market are global brands and that everybody knows them in the market and therefore, you know, but in fact you have to build a local brand, don't you? Uh, yeah. Let me maybe comment one thing, okay? Well, I'm, I'm coming to you. Yeah. Uh, you may be a huge brand, but you can screw up everything with one pure leadership, so mm -hmm. even locally, globally, so, so that's the, the one thing. Yeah? So forget so brand, leadership. Yeah, it's, it's a, leadership. a lot of about leadership, how you set up the, the, the environment, how do you lead people, how you let them grow and then give them purpose and autonomy, and that's regardless of the, whether it's free red ABB characters, letters in our name, or maybe blue in IBM, etc. If you screw up that part, it doesn't matter. People will not join you at all. And then the, the message and, and spread. And we know about those. Yeah, yeah we yeah. know about those. Okay. So, so I'm going to, because we're, we're kind of, we have to kind of keep moving along. So maybe from a, the same, but from a GBS kind of perspective, right? So, um, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to come to you, Chemek. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, uh, 
we can mention the kind of Rolls Royce, yeah, IAG. Yeah, actually, and, Dyson. The, and this his, this development uh, that I had in my professional life actually is quite similar to what I see on the business services market. You know, I have my background uh, in industry. I've been working for automotive, heavy industry, for aerospace industry as well. And it actually all happened in Poland. We had uh, two big waves of the foreign direct investments in Poland that created initially the manufacturing side. But across the, uh, across the manufacturing, all the other corporate functions came. And I will give you one example about the procurement. When companies they started to invent in manu invest in manufacturing, they created a role usually on site, a simple role to procure things for the site. Then people actually, over years, they were growing in terms of the competences, experience, and this created actually a solid pipeline of talents, professionals in procurement actually, that are ready to move on, to take on additional responsibilities, category management, some strategic sourcing activities, and today they all, well not all, but a lot of them, they move to business services environment because they're looking for other opportunities to demonstrate because they want to capitalize on all their experiences, knowledge, uh, and to demonstrate that they can actually push the business beyond. This is fantastic. I, I, I'm kind of going to build on that, because it, it's, it's, you know, uh, when you see the, the reports about what's happening within um, the kind of globalization of technology, et cetera, and, and Poland gets kind of picked out and, and other kind of locations in... Central Europe, which generally got get called Eastern Europe, etc. What, what do you think about that? Because I, I mean, my impression is, you know, we're 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 a very mature hmm? location, right? Mm -hmm. We are because actually, and, and it's coming from the fact that the company started here twenty something years ago, mm -hmm. and actually over all those years, we've built the talents and also leadership locally mm -hmm. that is able actually to collaborate and drive together with the global leadership drive this business forward. And this is important. It's about the understanding, it's about the culture of work as well. You know, our business, business services, I believe our sector is about the combination of technology and people. People who create, develop, and apply this technology. So having the business knowledge, process knowledge initially, because from the outsourcing world, people, they come with a lot of process knowledge. Applying this technology and working very closely with the business, now they can really push the things forward to the scale that we have never seen it before. You know, technology shorted really the distance between what has been considered in the past a back office and the front end of the business. We are now all together thanks to this technology development. So this combination uh, of, the, of the process and business knowledge, what is coming from the, what was considered back office now, working closely with the business, is delivering spectacular results. And I believe this is the situation now in, in business services in Krakow. What is on top of this, what Swavek mentioned, is the data. Working, you know, for example, just, you know, operating 15 years ago, no process related to invoices, you know, payments, etc. simple processes. Now, with all this knowledge and the data we acquired, we can actually do a lot of things, show the opportunities to the businesses, how to improve, how actually improve also to, to drive the results of the, of the business. And the good example in the COVID times was the cash management. A lot of companies, global companies, they move the cash management uh, to Krakow. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. they have seen, okay, guys, you know what you are talking about. You know how to actually to save the companies to survive and uh, to actually help the companies to survive difficult times. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Yeah. You're probably jumping ahead to to to, to yeah. our next topic. I'm going to come to Pavel, and this is a bit unfair, Pavel. Um, you're, you're just younger than than the rest of us, I think, right? So, um, um, so I, I think maybe. I mean, could you could you tell us a little bit? I, I think about where the the profession is in uh, in Krakow now with that generation which is maybe below um, the rest of us on this panel. Uh, Sylvia, excuse me. Maybe before I get started exactly to, to provide this answer, uh, I came to realize that just in this room uh, we collected a few hundred of uh, GBS experience and uh, we know here as people located here and leading companies uh, in Krakow, we know how to set up, optimize, uh, increase the maturity mm -hmm. of various uh, business services centers. And I believe this is a huge asset and this is uh, what we can also sense uh, here in, in this room. Mm -hmm. So we have more and more knowledge when it comes to uh, process consulting, uh, 
we know how to uh, do process mining. That's what uh, Przemek was uh, mentioning a couple of seconds ago. We do have plenty of process owners, and uh, not now, but a few years ago, we just started also our first efforts related to automation. And right now, mm -hmm. we, we know a lot about not only desktop automation, robotics process automation, we talk about cognitive automation mm -hmm. as well right now, and this is the part of the discussions I'm having with my teams. And coming so, back to no, the... No, 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 carry on with that, because I, I, actually I was going to ask you about that. So carry on with that. I mean, tell mm -hmm. us about, about automation and what's happening. Yes, yeah? yes. Uh, even... At ABB, uh, we, we have right now a huge, uh, huge uh, success story, how we au uh, automate our process. And of course, it leads to better quality, better response times. Of course, it decreases the cost of the services we provide uh, to our um, customers within ABB Group. And of course, uh, at the end, it has also positive impact on the margin uh, that uh, uh, we have on, on for, for our products and uh, for our uh, entire company. So. Uh, um, Plenty of uh, use cases that we explored and we are exploring still and uh, we still believe that there's plenty of potential that we are having. And uh, uh, being in this uh, environment, it gives us also the ability to exchange with our colleagues, our peers from other companies and uh, jointly search for different uh, uh, great use cases, how to even uh, make our business stronger and our processes more robust and better automated. So thank you. I think I, I'm going to bottle what you've just said, right? Okay, because um, I think we, um, that's that's terrific. Um, um, okay, um, uh, Amita. I mean, maybe we could come to um, back to you um, because Pavel just mentioned. I think he, he 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 started to mention what I think we would probably understand as as the local ecosystem, right? Yeah. Or the ecosystem as as we have um, developed it. Um, within within Krakow and I'm sure within um, other locations within Poland. What what because what did you mean by by ecosystem exactly, uh, Amita? Okay, I hope I'm audible. You um, are. Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so what I meant by ecosystem was um, at the base, companies need to innovate. Um, doing everything organically is not the only way to go about it. Companies need to have a healthy ecosystem, which is academia, which provides you a talent pool uh, for future, uh, but not just to hire, but actually to do joint research, et cetera, with. Secondly, uh, startups, because they are the ones who, with whom you actually create um, not just new products with joint collaboration, but when you hire from startups, you are actually bringing in entrepreneurs into your company. Thirdly, I meant was service provider companies, uh, companies such as HCL, Infosys, Harman, Cognizant, et cetera, of the world. Because companies, uh, when they globalize, although they build their in-house teams, there is certain kind of fungibility they look for. And they want to give some kind of context work to the partners sometimes. And having a healthy partner ecosystem in a country truly helps. And that's what we looked at uh, for all countries during our study. How would you expect such an ecosystem to evolve? Um, I think there is a joint effort needed. So I think, first of all, organizations like Aspire, et cetera, help because they enable knowledge share. Uh, so Andrew, thanks for um, having this organization. I think secondly, the government, um, you know, we just saw that there is a huge talent crunch that is coming about. And if governments um, don't change the way we educate our students and make it practical and more industry ready, and industries don't give chance to the students as interns or as training program or exchange programs, then I think um, then there is a chance to bridge that gap um, so I think knowledge share and leveraging the ecosystem and not have a closed organic approach is perhaps the way to actually develop the ecosystem around you. So thank you. Thank you very much. And, and the reason I wanted to kind of um, to get the definition from you, would anybody like to kind of pick that up um, just in the sense of um, I wonder whether that's the way um, that we've evolved here in, in Poland. Would anybody like to, to kind of pick that up? Because I mean, we're not being held back. We don't seem to be held back, right? Do we have an evolved ecosystem like that? One where 
um, government is ceding um, the development of uh, of the industry. Przemek. In a certain way, yes, but you know, probably it's a very Polish thing, actually, that we also like to drive the things ourselves, so we are not waiting for the government to, be, to give us something. Uh, so there is one element, especially in Krakow, you have Krakow Technology Park, so the place, the infrastructure of is space and basic, basic technology, and you have now over 400 startups, so young people, or a combination of squads, I would say, of experienced people with young, hungry wolves, they build a startup to, to address a solution. So this is a wonderful thing. But also, you know, there, there is, of course, there is some basic uh, uh, financial support system for the coming companies, yes, of governmental grants, special economic zones. But I think this is not something that is differentiating Poland from another. You can find it in Central Eastern Europe. What is particular is actually that we as a companies, we very often we collaborate with the universities ourselves. So we start the collaboration, we approach them. And we have the basic infrastructure. What I'm not talking about is the street, like offices and everything else. It is actually, and it's wonderful. It's great quality in Krakow. Uh, and um, so the example of this is this, this actually faculty at the University of Economics. So Pavel, maybe you may say a few words more about this because I stopped talking. And Pavel <laughs> will tell you more about the, uh, the university. Yes. Uh, actually, a few hundred meters away from our office, we have an uh, um, uh, economic uh, university of economy here we in Krakow. And uh, this is one of the pipeline of the uh, talent that we are uh, getting here. And actually, it's not the only one university we're having here in this beautiful city. There are plenty of um, students, more than 200,000 students that we are having, and more than uh, 50,000 uh, graduates uh, each and every year, which makes this uh, city also extremely vibrant and uh, provides us a lot of uh, um, great uh, uh, fresh blood, uh, let's say, uh, from universities uh, to, to our, uh, to our uh, companies. And uh, we, as a leadership, we cautious, uh, consciously uh, we collaborate with universities. We uh, uh, co-share, co-create certain programs uh, mm -hmm. uh, together with them. Uh, there is a wide range of different uh, apprenticeships, uh, uh, the programs that you can um, perform at uh, our companies. And uh, yeah, uh, also certain... Uh, um, uh, but, lectures that we are also but, doing. But for the thing that's students. happened there, so I mean, just to, to a meter's point about organic, because I would say that has been an organic growth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say that companies have reached in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. into the university. In fact, we, we've held out the carrot, yeah. Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. right. Um, we've been motivated to do it, um, and that energy is coming from us, yes. um, and, and, and they've responded. Yes. Yeah? So it's not been a strategy from on high. It's more, strategy is more your ability to, to um, respond mm -hmm. <laughs> to, mm -hmm. to circumstance. Would that, would, mm -hmm. Is that a fair mm -hmm. kind of comment? Um, look, mindful of time, okay, and, and um, uh, I kind of want to open it up to our in-person audience. Um, I think what we're at here is, is what is it that um, makes us different? Um, um, Jacek... Uh, Drabic, I, did, I didn't say beforehand I was going to come to you, but I am, because um, I think Motorola, I don't know, but I mean, I think the special economic zone in Krakow was, was developed effectively for, for Motorola. I mean, pr previously it was all thought to be all about manufacturing, um, so I think the first services um, special economic zone um, was, was especially kind of um, developed in order to um, appeal to Motorola. So... Um, Whatever you have to say, Jacek, um, I think we'd like to hear. About something special in Krakow? Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I well, mean. so I, I think you, you wanted to go away from COVID, but I will get back to COVID. Okay? <laughs> for, for the moment of the... Of the you, it would be a nice segue into the next part. That's but fine. There, there is no big yeah. difference between before COVID and COVID right now in my, in my sentence. Why, why I'm using this example, I remember, and I've come to something that's special. I remember the beginning of COVID and... Uh, Honestly, that were my thoughts, my personal beliefs and my personal thoughts. Not only my, but many leaders in our, in our company. We were absolutely sure, including myself, that bringing 95% of people back home in a company that is extremely hardware driven, it's absolutely impossible. Mm -hmm. okay? It went smoothly like hell. 
if anything, can be a small in hell. But, but, it, 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 yeah, really. <laughs> but it went extremely well. That was a, a huge surprise for myself personally and for many people in the company. That was, that was so transparent that nobody could believe. And why I'm going to, what, what is the, the way to being a special? I, I think here, in, not only in the region, but in Poland, we have people that know how to find a way, okay? If we are different from many other geographies, many other countries, you know, I cannot say because I don't know all of them, but I know some, okay? Mm -hmm. And I think we have this kind of a, uh, of a special, I don't know, skill, you know, if we cannot go, if, we, if it's impossible to go to the left, we will go to the right. I, I have a strong belief that people's brains start working only in a situation with, when you are in front of wall. Okay, when there is when, when there's, when there's something that is extremely difficult that needs to be done, okay, yeah. then the brain starts thinking. And somehow, naturally, I, I don't know, but our brains are all the time in front of the wall. So, you know, I, God, I have to say this, cause I, I don't know when it was, but we, 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 you and I spoke years and years ago, right? And you, uh, I remember you telling me that, do you know when we really perform at Motorola? When we're in competition with those, those Russians at Motorola, then we really kind of... Well, it's, I think it's this is something that's really specific at the region. If you, if you go about organic growth, you know, from mm -hmm. you know, 20 years ago to where we, many companies are here, including Motorola, that's exactly what happened. It's a, it's, it's a finding way to, do some, to, to make something done. And, yeah. and that's uh, something that's special for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Well, you've, you've kind of segued us into the next part, right? Because, you know, we're going to talk about what the impact of, of COVID has been, how we've responded to COVID, and then how we expect the future to evolve in terms of how COVID has changed the, di the dynamics. I actually want to come back to Amita, Amita, because you had a, a question about business continuity. Um, and I wanted to ask you, um, what, did, what did you mean by that in, 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 in terms of you know, your discussions um, or looking at, at, at how um, companies have performed globally? What is it about business continuity that you, you had in mind there? Because I think we may take some of this stuff for granted. <laughs> okay. Well, I hope again I'm audible, Andrew. Um, you so are? what I meant by uh, business continuity is, and I think all companies do have business continuity plans to some extent, but the requirement of having a business continuity plan uh, became so important during the last two years. Um, well, we can, we can all go back and work from home because thankfully countries like Poland, India, et cetera, have a good data infrastructure and internet infrastructure. But, you know, if people in a pandemic are falling sick and purely are not able to work, whether it's at home or at office, then you need to, as a company, not only be able to support your employees, but also have a business continuity plan for your business. And um, just like Aspire, you know, we, we connect with the global companies in India and across the globe. And we heard the point of view of various CXOs in 2020, what they thought about it. Very interestingly, there were so many different angles. From a people point of view, companies created new benefits plan. They trained their managers on how to be good virtual managers. Uh, they worked with the government and the local authorities to allow critical mass to reach, a critical mass workforce to reach to office if it was absolutely necessary. From an IT and security point of view, uh, they really compounded and increased their agents who could support and train for remote work. And they included so many new applications which would allow for them to manage um, employee in and out across the globe in a virtual world. Apart from that, they started looking at point of failures, single point of failures, and started creating a backup plan so that if one employee is unwell, uh, business still continues and we have a plan to take care of the employee and the business at the same time. Okay, uh, and Amita, did you, yeah, but, and, uh, but did, you, uh, did you come across evidence of, of, of uh, locations kind of experiencing difficulty in matching or in being yeah. able, so, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. There could be some locations, uh, you know, where, for example, uh, data, internet, et cetera, is very expensive, for instance. Um, India didn't face that because the data happens to be cheapest in the world. Then there were certain countries which were hit worse, more badly. In fact, you, 
you know, when the U.S. COVID wave was very strong, we saw a lot of work from U.S. being transferred to India. When the India COVID wave was very, very strong, then the reverse was happening to some extent. So I think it, it, was, it was a global phenomena. We all suffered through it. But, you know, the companies who were better planned did better during those times, I would say that. Okay. And uh, from your kind of global research, which locations seem to have done best? Well, I think in general, dealing with COVID, uh, some of the um, Asian countries like Singapore, uh, Taiwan, South Korea, Japan have done well just in terms of managing COVID. Uh, but we did a survey actually with the global companies in India to see was there a productivity impact. Uh, very interestingly, their productivity was all the time more than 92%. So I think countries did well. Uh, the difference was how prepared they were and how fast they uh, bounced back. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to kind of open this up now to maybe our panel. So, yeah, and I mean, just, just give me a, a kind of sense of what happened here in, in Poland from, I don't know, March the 4th or 5th or whenever it was, um, when we had the first COVID case. I remember we had a, a board meeting and we, we met. That was the the first case in Poland, wasn't it, the, the day of our board meeting? Yeah, um, so, so I think as we all remember, at least initially, uh, Poland seemed to, uh, uh, as a country, respond uh, well and, and, and um, we were advised to work from home, etc. And, and so, so my company did and um, it worked smoothly, both, both for our Poland branch and, and other branches as well. Uh, I think we, as, as a country, or as Krakow, uh, we were... Um, quite well prepared in terms of all the infrastructure, uh, you know, um, internet connections, etc. cetera, uh, the, the equipment. Um. So... Um, How long did it take? Uh, so I, I remember we... Uh, it was Friday the, Friday the 13th or something uh, uh -huh. that we announced in the company that since Monday we're working from home. And so uh, it was just... Um, so from we, Monday you were... Yeah. Yeah, okay. of course there were might be a few disruptions for for a few people, but uh, but other than this, uh, just just based on the on the normal continuity plan, uh, we were prepared for this. The the kind of impact started later. Yeah, when we realized that it will, it won't be a, a week or two or three or a month, and and all the human human aspects came into play. And uh, okay, okay, so so I mean, because there are two kind of aspects here. So we went into that kind of war footing. Um, and, and the response was kind of immediate, right? And, uh, and so, but we're now 18 months in. Yeah. So, Sylvia, I mean, in terms of, um, I mean, we could talk about onboarding and, you know, how we did that and all the rest of it, but we did it, right? I mean, yeah. we did it, right? I mean, it's kind of like history now. I mean, we can't remember even that we had a, a, yeah. an issue with it, right? We just yeah. did it, right? Um, but 18 months on, um, engagement, productivity, uh, I would say uh, at the beginning, as we, as we saw, it's a change management, yeah, so resistance, so we gave the stability in terms of work of home. And then, of course, everything changed in the, in the human, from the human perspective, like recruitment, virtual, virtual onboarding, virtual engagement, virtual team meetings. Um, and uh, I would say our habits changed. The habit changes between three and six months, yeah, and it's 18 months. So I'm sorry to say that our life now changed already. And we needed to, as we mentioned here, what is unique in Poland in terms of our culture is flexibility. So it just moved like this from the leadership and people. And I think what is the biggest value is that we were empathetic. This is what makes a difference because we have individual approaches. So it's not, we are not the leaders that say, we are leaders that listen, and then we can find the best ways for the companies. Each company is different, will be different solutions. So all the things change in terms of people processes, but the most important for me is that I see the change in the leadership. So we moved from the more directive slide into more, uh, I would say, partner or empathetic style. And mm -hmm. this is what makes a difference in Poland. That's why we have stable teams when I compare across other regions. Uh, Crack of attrition, at least from my perspective, is really low comparing to other regions uh, globally and in Western Europe. So I think our unique culture, flexibility, and the right leadership makes it really uh, the difference how we are right now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, um, Travik, I'm going to ask you as well. I mean, in terms of productivity, engagement, 
over 18 months? I mean, what, 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 what so are you seeing there? What I will say about the productivity, it's, para it's kind of the paradox, but mm -hmm. I believe that 18 months uh, of this uh, difficult situation actually increased the productivity in the team. teams. Uh, I would say probably it's because of the flexibility, how they can work, where they can work, of course, in Poland. Uh, what do you mean, of course? Uh, you know where they are? <laughs> okay, so most <laughs> likely, yes. Uh, we, we try to know where they are. Uh, uh, but again, productivity has, has, has increased. I believe that people put more focus on making the job done better and quicker rather than uh, uh, longer. So that's one aspect. About engagement, I think there is a small problem here mm -hmm. at the moment because I believe at the beginning of the situation where we uh, actually establish kind of the team meeting, uh, meetings talking about the different things other than job, just to keep, uh, uh, keep together and, and keep the engagement of the people, uh, over the time it has kind of slowed down. And mm -hmm. at that moment I believe that many of our employees change their habits uh, mm -hmm. already and it would be in my opinion kind of probably a little bit difficult to come back to the engagement to the level of engagement we had before when we came back to the office okay okay but uh, uh, in general i believe we need to find uh, the solution uh, for those type of the problems we may face this this is quite a, i mean i not that everything we haven't talked about isn't serious but this seems to me to be a, a particularly kind of serious um, uncertainty, if you like, mm -hmm. right? Which is because we're bringing on to, to kind of new ways of working um, and, and the hybrid model. Mm -hmm. um, we've had our own experiences. I mean, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, kind of organising this as a as a hybrid event, and suddenly realising that hybrid is not online, mm -hmm. right? Um, people can't just drop in um, at the last moment as they've learned to do after the last eighteen months. There's a kind of planning um, that has to be done that, that people have got kind of. The, unused to, 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 to kind of planning in, 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 in that way. Um, so in terms of this kind of um, uh, the new ways of working, um, I just wonder what, what, what do we think this might mean for us in terms of um, talent availability? Mm -hmm. And who can I kind of um, ask about that one? Yeah, yeah <laughs> I'm gonna. talent availability, right? Because... Um, you know, on, 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 on the basis that, um, uh, you know, people may not be in Krakow, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, the Krakow is, is like Warsaw, like a capital city. I mean, lots of people that don't actually come from those places, um, so they've gone home. Yep. Um, but they don't have to, 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 um, to work in Krakow. They can work in Warsaw, they can work in anywhere. Mm -hmm. Can they? I don't know. Yeah, you tell me. First of all, from this pandemic, we can learn a lot, and there are plenty of also of opportunities that uh, it opened already for all of us. And uh, uh, the way how we can attract new talents is the one of those obvious examples. You know, we don't need to stick to the only the local market, but uh, we can also attract talents uh, from different uh, cities, also from those uh, um, places where usually uh, we are not. Uh, so easily, let's say, searching for 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 the, for the talents. But of course, it is a, a two-edged sword. You know, also our people can be easily attracted by a companies located in different locations, and uh, we need to be also in this competitive, uh, um, yeah, let's call it battle. And uh, I must say, I like to be in this battle because in the end, uh, company can win and uh, employee can win. Therefore, it's uh, happy to uh, come up with better and better ways to engage our people. And this is also part so, of our leadership. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick with you because also on the GBS mm -hmm. part, right? I mean, Krakow mm -hmm. has benefited over the last uh, 10 years or so from an increasing number of foreign nationals Mm -hmm. yep. um, that have come and worked in, in, in Krakow, mm -hmm. right? Yes. I'm thinking that during COVID, they've kind of gone home. No. Not exactly. No, not, really not exactly, really actually. Really first of all... You're allowed to disagree with me. First of all, I would say that uh, 
Uh, this is also one of the factors why we are so successful as a location that we haven't mentioned uh, in this discussion so far is our diversity. Around 20% of our workforce uh, here in uh -huh. our center are colleagues coming from different uh, geographies, different countries and also different geographies. And uh, uh, on the one hand, uh, uh, it brings a lot of diversity, a lot of different uh, ways how we can uh, tackle different, different problems. Uh, it helps us also to serve our customers uh, with the local culture with the local language, even by the natives. Uh, not to mention that we have plenty of our very talented uh, um, colleagues that speak uh, almost each and every foreign language you can, you can uh, imagine here. Um, I believe that the city by itself, as a UNESCO heritage city, with the vibrant uh, um, hospitality, uh, vibrant uh, nightlife for, 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 for the youngsters, uh, it's attracting already for years uh, 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 foreigners. And actually, we have more and more expats. Uh, we have uh, um, quite good infrastructure for expats to uh, live here in Krakow, also international we, we, schools. We do. I, I mean, I, I know we do, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I just... <laughs> Being foreign myself, right? and I do uh, see, I do <laughs> see more. I, I do see plenty of uh, new joiners uh, coming from from different countries, and okay. uh, step by step, even uh, those uh, um, contractual and uh, legal aspects of uh, kind of employing uh, um, uh, foreigners here in Poland are improving. And of course, we are still on this journey. We can be better here, but uh, I believe that uh, this is also one of the uh, factors that uh, is um, very uh, thoroughly right now. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Przemek is, is. Yeah, I uh, just wanted to build on, on top of what Paweł is saying that uh, two elements, I believe, that what makes this space, mm -hmm. city special. I believe it's potentially Polish habit that common enemy united us. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, this is, I'm, I hope you agree with me, but it is Polish. Attitude, what, yes. Enemy, yes. enemy, yeah. Yeah, come on, enemy united us. Any, any common enemy. enemy. Uh, oh. So then, what I'm trying to say that I noticed that we, as a Krakow city, we joined together to sit and to figure out how we're gonna respond to the situation. It's not only about you, you, you mm. and me, etc. But we jointly sat together and we started discussion. What you are gonna do? What I can reuse? What I can share? Mm. And this is the, I believe, the attitude of this place that makes mm. us special. And then the second uh, statement about, you know, uh, foreigners, etc. I believe that pandemia opened our minds that diversity and inclusion is, inclusion is not only about gender, but also about the foreigners, about, you know, the, the, the age, all kind of diversity. And then we look at the different people, mm -hmm. different regions, different aspects. And say, this is the source of talents. So that's what I like very much out of this pandemic. That mm -hmm. I'm yeah. happy that it yeah. happened, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, maybe we wouldn't uh, figure out that something like this exists. I, I would oh, maybe, sorry, Swavek, so come. If yeah. I can. So I would like also add the fact that Poland and locations like Krakow are probably at the moment very few locations where there is a investment. So we, mm -hmm. as a location, became more important and more valuable for people for, for example, from Western Europe, who actually decide to move to Poland because they've got probably even better role, better position, better job here, mm -hmm. comparing to what they have over there. We, s we see how big unemployment is in Spain, in Portugal, in, in Italy. In Poland, we actually see also because of that many of the people who decide to relocate permanently to Poland. I think that's a, a, it's a, it's a really important point. We're, we're not the poor relation, are we? Yeah, we're, we're the attractive location for for, for, for Western European nationals. Right? Yes. I mean that that's that's uh, that's true. Sorry, uh, yeah, Michal, you you. Um, I don't know. Maybe you can. Hello. I think it's also something something uh, more uh, about this attitude about the uh, uh, standing. So me, I ought to say. So um, um, your uh, history is with uh, emphasis. Infos yeah, Philips, yeah. Infosys, Adaptive. Okay, all right. And you're not from Krakow, you're from... No. But you're currently based in Warsaw, right? In Łódź. Oh, Łódź, Łódź, okay, great. Yeah, but uh, that's why I, I would like to not... I will not... Uh, I'm not expert in, let's say, Krakow. That's habits. fine, I just <laughs> wanted to... Put you in but that's why I would like to tell about the uh, particular things about the, the, the GBS sector itself. Uh, because I think also the, the, the sector itself gives us a lot of opportunity. I mean, 
and collecting special people, I mean hunger people, people with the hunger. We are very, very hungry. And also my history of the changing the company for the something more. Mm -hmm. Your history from one company to another. Uh, your, so, so I mean the, 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 the GPS sector itself give us a lot of opportunity to grow, to be engaged, to have a new opportunities. So, so this is something uh, special and we like it. I mean Polish people like it, like it very much. Something new, something special. So also I have a question, yeah, because I, am, I was switching to the com from the companies, uh, but in fact I see that, for example, IBM or ABB are able to keep the people for uh, 20 years in the company. Mm -hmm. What are you doing well to keep them so long? <laughs> well, we're not going to share that on, 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 on YouTube, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, look, we, we've, we've only got a few minutes left, so um, I want to kind of move to what would be a... I suppose the last question here, which is, um, I'm trying to think how to, to phrase this. Um, I mean, I, I come back to this this kind of notion of the world being flat, and 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 the fact that we've said the world isn't flat. Yeah, um, um, that particular places or spaces um, create their own kind of um, attractiveness. And I think that that's that's clearly true. But but then the other thing that seems to have opened up during COVID is is actually that concept of space, right? I mean, we've been living in our homes, um, and therefore, you know, um, suddenly we've had to kind of find new spaces even within our houses in order to do work, etc. And a new kind of sense of private space, I think. And um, I'm just trying to wonder what 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 can be the particular challenges to Krakow. We can all say or Poland. You know, we can all say that, that you know, we've done extremely well, but are there any particular challenges that you think we face? Um, yeah. Um, and I just want one word answers, and I'm prepared to go anywhere, and, and yes, I can see you kind of nodding your head, so mm -hmm. it, you can say it can be a just yes, but, but maybe you want to give a sentence or two? Sure. So going back to challenges, uh, uh, I was just recently uh, participating in, in a call um, where uh, we saw analysis uh, talking about <clears throat> positions opened, uh, number of positions opened in different sectors a year ago and the number of positions opened right now in the comparison a year back. There are two areas where we where is 60% growth in number of positions and the second area is 50%. The first area is HR. So that was the first surprise for me. Mm -hmm. HR number of positions, 60% across the board, you know, year to year. The second one was IT, 55%. And this is probably not a surprise. Within the HR, there are a couple of sections, you know, HR business partners, I don't know how many percent up. Recruiters, 130% up, okay? Mm -hmm. So, and I'm talking, but I want to talk overall about HR space. Uh, in particular, I think we had a conversation a couple of uh, months ago or a year ago about the biggest challenges in Krakow and the biggest challenges in Poland, and I f fully believe that is actually true until now. The biggest challenge that I see right now for the company to grow, in not only in numbers but also in maturity, in the decision-making process, in, in, in general the development for the company and for the country, is the lack of leaders and the lack of managers. Mm -hmm. To find right now a good leader and good manager on the market it's a really substantial task. Mm -hmm. Of course, we can do it. That depends probably only about the price in many situations. But that's a buying a person from company to company. And that's not exactly mm -hmm. what we are looking for. We are looking for first line managers. We are looking for second line managers. We are looking for, for leaders. We are looking for VPs, et cetera, et cetera. And I, I think mm -hmm. that's one of the, in my opinion, one of the biggest challenges we have at the moment. First, of course, the number of people and the quality of people that we need, but we need people to lead them. Okay. And that's a big challenge. At okay. The Can you pass the microphone to your to your side there? I'm going to go to, to Tomasz here, because you're a young leader. I mean, I'm, I'm just looking around here, right? I can remember when this association was was half <laughs> foreign and half Polish, and I'm looking around today, and I'm. I'm am I the only foreigner in this room? I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, the answer is yes, right? And I'm not a leader, right? So, 
So, Tomasz, come on. Uh, Tomasz Szaraczek, uh, IG Group. So, um, I think the trend is changing, you're right. So, and, and, uh, especially in Krakow, we have good talent potential on the more senior level now compared to 15, 20 years ago when, when all started, the number of experts has... Give, just give us a sense of your, your experience in the industry. Um, when did you start? Um, 2004. Okay. And then with Capgemini, HS, 17 years, HSBC, right? HSBC, Capgemini, HSBC, State Street, and now with IG Group. Okay, 17 years, right? Okay. So it's, uh, I think it's, it's a combination of um, the development. So the, the experts who came here help develop the, the experts, the subject matter experts, but also the, the leadership potential. And companies who have grown significantly in the sector here um, must have invested in uh, the first-line management development programs. I think this is the key, and Jacek pointed out. It's, it's a continuous kind of theme because people move on uh, after two, three years to, to uh, the next position, etc. So you need to backfill those, not, not, not only through the external uh, attrition, but also through the, the internal growth. So um, successful companies have those programs in-house or they partner with training organizations. And I think that's really key. Um, where, um, whereas maybe other cities in the region are less uh, um, attractive because of, of that kind of uh, pool. So I think the competition uh, around this room is also... Um, Attitude, a great um, ex, um, example of uh, kind of how people have developed, but also um, a bigger population uh, gives also greater opportunity to compared to smaller cities. Thank you. Um, look, I know there are other people that would like to ask questions. We've, we're, we're kind of like two minutes to go, so um, unfortunately, um, because I have a last question that I want to ask, right? So, um, so I'm going to ask that question, which is. Um, I don't think we can look at what things are going to be like in the next three years. Um, we used to, right? We used to say five years, right? What do you think things are going to look like in five years? God knows, right? So um, what are you focusing on in the next six months? Swabek. Well, I believe that at the moment, especially in, in, in IBM Software Lab, we went through pretty significant growth this year and I believe that the, with the I would say relaxation of the uh, COVID restrictions we plan to come back to the office and I believe one of the challenges and one of the main projects I have in mind is actually to integrate this big number of people who joined IBM into the organization create kind of the environment where the people will uh, feel and 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 uh, Identify with the with the company. To, sorry, so I mean, just to make this, so does that mean that you feel that there may be a loss of a sense of what it means to be yes. an IBMer? Yes, I yeah. believe yeah. that's uh, that's that's the point. That's the challenge. Yeah? It, that's the challenge, and especially that uh, for m many of those uh, people, this is the first work uh, they they have in in their professional life, and it actually. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, probably I would say the same. Uh, oh, but okay. I, I will leave the people, the people aspect to Sylvia. Uh, but actually, uh, COVID caught my company in the middle of the project to add a few new office space, a few new floors. We have kind of stopped it for, for a moment. Now, uh, now we are coming back to this project. So despite the fact that some people will start working remotely, etc., we... We actually need to prepare the new office space. You signed a lease for office space just yes. before COVID. Well yeah, done. yeah, mm -hmm. that's what we've done. <laughs> but uh, we actually need it. We, 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 are, um, we are kind of coming back to the office next week, and uh, we literally have just a few, uh, just a few okay. seats free. Okay. So, so this will be my focus, okay. I think. From my perspective for Pega Poland, the most important is how to connect the people that joined during the pandemic together to understand our culture. I think it's about engagement of those who didn't sense the culture. Uh, how to make us connected, um, I would say, and be, uh, so we are really closer. Because so it, it makes well, a is, difference. This is corporate culture. You're both I'm talking about corporate, corporate culture here. I mean, you're so right, corporate you're right, or location, well, right. you know, okay. it's, it's like okay. uh, the site culture that, that okay. we feel. This is what I see. Mm -hmm. I will be not an original hero. Uh, <laughs> people reconnection, that's exactly an ongoing project we are, we are running. 
Um, uh, currently, we are in the middle of the uh, implementation of the hybrid way of working here uh, in our beautiful office. And uh, let's face it, a few hundred of people started to work for us during COVID. Some of them, as my colleague here said also, um, it is the first job for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, those uh, first uh, uh, role models that they will collect uh, uh, uh -huh. uh, within the first years of employment is vital actually for the entire professional career. And I do feel responsible as a leader for uh, also for those new joiners and uh, uh, really would like to show them our great uh, corporate culture. And, and if you don't? What's the, what's the, what's I'm the afraid, problem? The I'm, uh, first of all, I'm afraid that we will lose them. Uh, s second of all, um, I'm afraid that it might have certain impact also on their professional life. And mm -hmm. I really want them to be the most uh, um, uh, successful talents that we have here in the city. Okay, thank you. Przemek? Przemek, 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 Zakrzewski. Maybe let me go away a little bit from this question and make a step a little must, mid, right? mid, okay. mid, mid term uh, exercise. I believe that what I would focus on is like build a little bit better connection with small and medium companies within this region and Poland. I believe that when I listen to my colleagues from not huge companies like we are, big brands, etc., but the small and medium companies, mm -hmm. that very important part of this ecosystem mm -hmm. we've been talking about the, the, from the very beginning. So as they grow, we're going to grow as well. It's all about connection with different type of activities. They are the very important value in our chain of delivering value to customers. So I would love to focus on small and medium businesses. Mm -hmm. And when I listen to my colleagues, they can provide us a lot of value, can be kind of integrated part of our activities, whether it's research, IT, or uh, GPS, whatever. I believe that they are very valid, important mm -hmm. parts. So I would let them grow. If they grow, we grow as well. And the challenge for those guys is that they cannot afford to hire professionals as we. So we need to help them. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of my message, mm -hmm. what I would love to focus. Maybe not six months, a little bit more, but still, this is the challenge. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Very important. Uh, so we're, we're going to go to Przemek. So, uh, but Amita, we'll, we'll come to you afterwards if you want to uh, just kind of prepare for that. So Przemek. We're slightly different because we're a new century in Krakow. So, you know, we work from, from uh, the office, 100%. And actually, you know, we proved and uh, that we can deliver, you know, migrate business using mm -hmm. remotely uh, to Krakow. So it's not my concern. Technicalities are not mm -hmm. my concern. What we are building is a team and the identity of the company. Mm -hmm. So this is my focus for the next. So yeah, I mean, you, it's a it's a really kind of important kind of example to us, right? I mean, you've been working 100% in the office, yes. while the rest of us are around yeah. 10, 15, 20 percent, right? Well, I believe you know that the, despite of many uh, of advantages that the COVID actually brought to us, you know, technologies, mm -hmm. the way we are actually adopt digital technologies to our daily work life, I think. Uh, um, the innovation and the problem solving is coming largely from the interactions between human beings, interaction mm -hmm. in person. And when people, they do not interact in person, the problem solving mm -hmm. is struggling. Well, we're about to interact in person, in this room, in fact, just after. But mm -hmm. So, Amita, uh, I want to come to you, because um, you've been listening to what we've um, had to say. Um, and, and I kind of like to ask you, what would be your takeaway from the conversation today? Um, I think, first of all, it's been an incredible conversation. Um, I learned a lot about Poland, which definitely my research can't get me to the kind of information I, I got here. I think the key thing that I learned here is that there is a lot of positive energy in the leadership. Uh, there is a lot of hope to do better and uh, better with time. And definitely COVID has not shaken that sentiment at all. I also like the fact that how leaders um, closely look at culture and um, their talent as their foundation for success. Um, so I think this was really, really a positive conversation. And uh, I think it's only going to take Poland further ahead in the journey. Thank you, Amita. And thank you for your support in putting together this event. We're over time, we never go over time, so I'm going to kind of wrap it now. So thank you. Um, thank you to our speakers. Um, thank you to all the companies that have um, supported 
um, this edition of, of Crack Off Calling. Um, uh, obviously, the companies um, represented on the panel. I'm also going to thank uh, KinArts because they've provided us with these, these, um, these chairs. So thank you. Um, thank you to our audience um, in person and online. Um, I said we wanted to re replicate an investor visit. Um, unfortunately, if you're joining us online, this is a bit which you can't do, because generally what happens at this point is we network over a drink. And that's what we in person um, are going to do um, right now. But thank you for joining us. Um, I think it's been a, a, a fantastic um, discussion. And uh, as we say in Poland, to those that can't join us, przykro mi i na zdrowie. <laughs> <laughs> and you okay. forgot you forgot hit the like button <laughs> and subscribe and cut thank you